So in order to understand what is magnetism, we really have to know a little bit more about the fundamental particles that make up everything around us. So part of the particles is a quantity called charge. Charge comes in a positive form or a negative form. And the really interesting thing about charge is if it's just sitting still, it emits a force field. And that force field is an electrical force field. And then if you move that charge, as that charge moves, it also emits a magnetic field. So wherever you have magnetism on Earth or in space, then you have moving charges producing that magnetic force field. A electromagnet becomes a magnet because you start pushing charges around, they're moving, they create a magnetic field. So a coil of wire with no electricity running through it isn't magnetic. As soon as electricity runs through it, you have moving charges, there's a magnetic field. Well, we know when there's a magnetic field around because of its uh, effect on things that are magnetic. So even though we can't see it, we can feel it with other magnets. The simplest way you can do that is with a compass. The compass needle is a teeny little magnet itself. And when there's another magnet nearby, it'll react to it. So one of the great examples in daily life that shows the connection between electricity and magnetism is actually um, in my backyard. So I live here in California and we have lots of earthquakes and so I have a earthquake um, emergency kit in my backyard. And in there I have a hand crank radio. To make that work, there's a crank that we rotate around and you can hear and feel the resistance in that crank. And what's happening, there's a magnet within that radio and you're moving that magnet within a coil and that creates an electrical current electricity and then that electricity can get stored in a rechargeable battery. So what you're doing is you're really creating electricity by moving a magnet. So not only do you have magnetism from moving charged particles but you can create electricity by moving a magnet within a wire. A lot of the electricity that we have comes from the generator mechanism. The water in a dam will go over magnets and cause the magnets to move and there will be a huge coil of electrical wire that that magnet's moving through. And then that generates this electricity that goes out, gets farmed out to all of our houses. Magnets have become part of our everyday lives. Um, my purse has a magnetic latch to keep it shut. Within my purse, I have credit cards, I have um, subway passes, all of those things use uh, magnetic technology. Now there are trains that are driven from very large magnets that alternate and move and they push the train along the tracks. Even if you're out in the woods, we have magnetism. So people take, out in the woods, people often will take a compass with them so they don't get lost. And those compasses actually are detecting the magnetic field of Earth. So Earth has, within its core, moving charged particles that are part of the molten iron core. And as it's rotating around, it creates electric currents and that creates um, magnetic fields. The same kind of thing happens on the sun. The sun has very strong electric currents because it has charged gas that's flowing all throughout it. And these create extremely strong magnetic fields, thousands of times stronger than the magnetic field of Earth. In the solar system, you can find magnetism on many of the other planets. Um, not all of them, however. So Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, not so much magnetism. But Earth is a very magnetic planet. And then the giant planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they all have very strong magnetic fields, much stronger than Earth's, in fact. If we are trying to figure out if there's magnetism around a planet, say, we will build a special kind of compass that we call a magnetometer. It measures magnetism. It's a little compass. And it flies through the magnetic fields of other planets. And as it's flying through those magnetic fields, we can sense uh, the direction and the strength of the magnetic fields that it's flying through. And so that's how we can tell there are magnetic fields around other planets. Even though we can't see them, we can sense them still. And the biggest source of magnetism in the solar system is the sun itself. The sun, which is the biggest thing in the solar system, is also the most magnetic uh, thing in our solar system. It has a huge magnetic field that's connected to it and then actually flows out of it in the um, 
with the wind that it blows out. It blows out this wind of charged particles called the solar wind, and that actually carries the sun's magnetic field uh, with it throughout the entire solar system. So the whole solar system is in fact filled with the sun's magnetic field. What can happen is all this energy can get stored in these magnetic fields. And just like you would store energy in a in a rubber band by pulling it really tight. Out in space, you have this invisible force field holding energy, and then it can snap. That happens a lot on the sun surface, around sunspots, and it also happens in Earth's magnetic field out in space. And that phenomenon is known as magnetic reconnection. And then it also happens on the sun, in the atmosphere of the sun, you have these magnetic fields above sunspots that are moving around and they're storing a lot of energy. The energy becomes so intensely entangled in the magnetic field lines that they literally break and then reform into a simpler form. While they're breaking, if you will, they accelerate particles to huge speeds. They release a ton of energy. And these are events that we call solar flares. Some of the effects that magnetism has in space that uh, are very um, spectacular, for example, are the solar wind when it interacts with magnetic fields of planets can create something called the aurora. You'll see these lights in the sky in very big bands of green just going from horizon to horizon. And sometimes those northern lights will move and shift and turn colors, they'll turn white, blue, purple. People started realizing that there was somehow these auroral lights were connected with magnetism and Earth's magnetic field. And that they were also somehow connected with a sun and these spots on the sun. So there are particles that get trapped inside of these magnetic fields of planets and when the solar wind's magnetic field goes blowing by them it can actually perturb them and cause a circuit in the magnetic field so that it causes electricity to actually flow through the magnetic field of the planet, smash into the atmosphere of the planet and light it up. Just like in a neon tube, when you send electricity through a neon tube, the gas in the tube lights up. Same thing happens in the gases of atmosphere of planets when this current gets running through them and that creates what we call an aurora. But Earth isn't the only place where this happens. We see aurora on Jupiter, on Saturn. Um, in fact, the aurora on Jupiter and Saturn are much more intense than the ones that are on Earth. So it's really a recent thing that, that, our, that science has really understood this invisible force.